Welcome to All Things Green. My name is Jill. I work at Northport Young Garden Center and today we're going to be making a fun porch pot that's very easy to do and festive. So I wanted to start off today with looking at some merchandise that we have for decorating for Christmas. We have lots of swags and door knockers hanging up. We have these decorative wreaths here and you can also buy a more plain wreath and decorate it yourself, which is very easy. And uh, here's an example of some porch pots that we have for sale. And of course, we have beautiful Christmas trees on the Christmas tree lot right now. We have Fraser, Balsam, and White Pine, and plenty of wreaths as well. And of course, boughs, so we can make porch pots. Um, we have already made uh, pots ready to purchase, and we also have these beautiful kissing balls that you hang from your annual hooks. And uh, there's also some real festive uh, designs in these planters. So porch pots can be very easy, but you have to have a plan plan the pot, work the plan. So today I'd like to make a porch pot using these birch poles and then I'm going to come up with the boughs I'm going to use and the decorative frosting, I like to call it, to really make the planter pop. So today we're going to use birch poles and uh, what about we use gold and red and white? So we have our white from our birch poles. We have our beautiful bow. In the store, we also have pre-made boughs with all the frosting included for doing your porch pot, everything included. I'm gonna pull from here and pull some additional gold and gold balls. And so I'm going to set this here because this is my plan. I think I'll always also use this beautiful owl to hang off there that also has some gold on it. And what is Christmas without red berries? So let's throw some of those in there as well. Now we're going to pick the boughs we're going to use. We have plenty of boughs out for sale yet. And so I like to use contrasting boughs. So I think let's use some red pine. Red pine is great for swagging over the sides of pots. And it is actually the bough that stays nicest longest. And so we're going to use red pine. We have our long needles. Then we're going to use Fraser, which has short needles in contrast and also a different blue color. And then we will use cedar and some of these other decorative items like this uh, variegated boxwood and some Norway. These are specialty boughs that we carry. So we also have red twig dogwood and curly willow, which adds a little poof in the end. So let's get started. So I'm gonna set these things aside that we're not gonna use. And uh, I think we need to talk about the tools we're gonna need. We're gonna need a pot. And so the best kind of pot to use outside is something that's not going to crack when your soil freezes. So um, this pot right here is plastic or fiberglass. And the, um, the soil in there, when it expands, won't hurt it. If you have a nice ceramic pot, and you want to use it outside, I think the best thing to do would be to make your arrangement in another pot 
and then just set it inside. We have a good selection of these Wisconsin pots yet. There's white and red and they are very popular. So let's talk about tools. You're gonna need a good pruner. This is a Felco. I got it 30 years ago, best pruner I ever had, and we do sell it in the store. A great gift for a gardener. Maybe a pair of scissors. Some wire. And this is called freeze proof. This you can spray on your wreaths, your Christmas trees, your evergreen arrangements, and it makes a coating on it to make it not dry out so fast. So it's a good thing to put on to keep it nicer. I also have a sharp lopper for the bigger boughs, which I won't use very much probably. I chose this plastic pot with these beautiful birch poles. And what we're going to do is stand these up first. When you do a pot, you want to use the main structure first goes in first. So if it's the birch poles or if it's a beautiful spruce top, which we have a lot of, and uh, you could put those in the planters and add to it, or you could just take a nice spruce top in the house if you don't have room for a big Christmas tree. And here I just put it in a pot with some soil, fresh cut on the bottom, watered in, if you spray it with wilt proof, it's gonna last all through the Christmas season. Okay, so let's put in those birch poles. So I pre-moistened some potting soil. And what I'm attempting to do here is to pack the soil around the birch logs so that they stand up and don't fall over. So I'm gonna scoop in, first I'm gonna kind of figure out, I have three different lengths here. I think that looks nicest. And so what I'm gonna do is put some of this moistened peat potting soil around these birch poles. And then I'm gonna pack it down real tight. Keep them standing up. should put maybe the short one more up towards the front which isn't going to work because there's a big high center to it so that is not going to work but I think this will and so we're going to add more potting soil fill this baby up I love making porch pots It's a great thing to do with your friends as well. Get everybody together, get a bunch of boughs, and just have a fun time. Great to spend time with your friends or family, making beautiful things. Okay, now we have our pot filled to the tippy top with moistened peat moss, and we are going to start our creation. So the first thing I like to do is put in the big bows. And so let's put some Fraser standing up kind of amongst the birch poles and maybe a little behind them. So here I'm kind of a little bit above the birch poles and I want it sticking in the ground and I am about this far in, which is good, but we have to cut these side branches off so we can stick them in pretty far. And you'll always want to make a fresh cut on your bough so that it is like a Christmas tree. We'll drink some water and stay longer. So hey, let's make the first beginning of our piece of art. So again, we're gonna cut off these lower boughs so they stick in nice. 
And then let's put one over here, a little bit lower. We've kind of want different heights. And then now we're gonna work on the swags off the planter. So here we have some beautiful red pine. I love red pine and uh, it makes such good swags. So I'm gonna start in the front. This is going to be a one-sided planter, obviously. But if you want to make a planter that's viewable on all sides, you just do it taller in the center, but you don't want to cover up your birch poles too much. So we have some nice shorter ones I'm gonna save for later. And then let's get a couple more. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> So here's, hey, what about putting a red pine towards the back? That way it kind of brings it together. You know, this is all just, you can't really go wrong with these boughs. People get afraid of doing this, but it's really kind of like art. Everybody's eye is a little different. And so there isn't really a right way, a wrong way, but there is Jill's way. So, okay, I'm gonna stick with red pine for a while. I think when we swag over the sides, it looks nice to soften the edge with some swaggy boughs, but also leave a little showing of the pot here and there, but always cover the lip up and also the, the soil. So let's put some more red pine in there. And we also have more Fraser. So let's do some standy uppy red pine. And let's not forget the back, even though it's viewable from the front, we still need to make some swags in the back. It's really easy to stick in the pot. And you know what? You set that outside after you water, it freezes solid and those boughs are not gonna blow away. So once in a while, you can stick some, like these red pine going up instead of down. So I think we have pretty good filler of the red pine. You know, I kind of feel like less is better because these boughs are just so pretty on their own. And if you get it too full, it gets cluttery. And then you don't appreciate, you know, the, the little, the difference, the long needles, the short needles, the blue, the green, oh, it's just so fun. So let's do some more Frasier. So we have this Frasier that's been cut off, but hello, it's really nice and blue on the bottom. And this swags, so let's stick a swag of Frasier. Now we're gonna wanna make sure that gets a little far in because we gotta hide that stump that we cut off. So we need some more Fraser. I like to work like big, big bows down to little bows. I think that works the best. So I'm gonna cut this a little shorter. I might put a swag of Fraser down here. Hey, isn't that looking good already? Let's prune off some of these Short Frasers. Look how pretty this one is. It's just so pretty. Hey, we'll cover up that stump with this. Let's do that. And if we put the blue facing out in between the red pine, a little swaggy of Frasier going out that way. And what aren't we gonna forget? The back. So we need to go back here, stick in 
couple phrasers. You don't want to stick this stuff out too far from the planter. Okay, we've got a pretty good base here. I think we need some more Fraser right here. So, let us get a nice point. Look at this. See this nice point? You know what I used to do? I used to take these long Frasers, I'd wire them together, maybe four big long ones, the same length. Wire them at the top, spread them out, set them in your planter, and you have an instant Fraser Christmas tree. So, there you go. Tip for the day. So, we're going to stick this in, and of course, we need to cut off the bottom. Okay. Believe me, it doesn't stick in as well if you don't. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Okay, it's a little crooked. That's pretty nice. I kind of want to leave room here for a bow. So I'm going to make a bow nest. And uh, so I'm going to keep in mind that I'm going to put these boughs kind of out from where my bow will go. And I also will put more decorative things around the bow. So, I think I see another hole for a Fraser. How does that look? I think that looks really nice. So, okay. It doesn't look too full, but believe me, it gets full fast. So now we're going to add our cedar. I love cedar. Oh, snow on cedars is the best. Okay, these are big. These are real big. Cedar also makes a nice trailing, you know, kind of spiller. So we're, this is too long. So we're going to cut this off like that. Okay, let us put a little cedar coming out this side of the pot. Isn't that pretty? And then let's add a little bit spilling, trailing. I think I want to stand that up a little more and get more archy. And then look at this. If we go in threes, Ones, threes, fives, odd numbers and design. So, look. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I see another spot for some cedar. I think it'd be pretty to have a cedar maybe back here. So, we don't need it real long, but we'll make a fresh cut here. Okay. Now we gotta decide, do we want it this way or this way? I think that way. So I'll go back here. How does that look? It doesn't wanna stand up. Let's see, we'll just turn that a little bit. There. Okay. Hey, we're almost done. Okay, so let us put just a little bit more filler in here. I am thinking red pine. And like I said, you don't want to overfill it. Let the bough shine. That's what I say. Okay. So now I think it's time for some decorative frosting on our planter. So I pre-picked, I pre-picked my bowl 
and these gold ornaments and this beautiful white and gold owl and some red berries. So what's a winter pot without red berries? So these are artificial. They'll last a long time. So we're going to plunk some in here. And again, I have three, one, threes, and fives. And I like to go different heights too with the stuff that is uh, taller or brighter. Okay. I think at this point I'm going to put, well actually I am going to put the bow on next. Let's do that. So what I did is I made this bow, I wired it to a stick. So it sticks down into the pot. So we're going to put this bow, we want it hanging off a little bit. So of course we're going to have to fluff it in then. But, isn't that pretty with the birch? Okay. Now we have these beautiful gold hoo-hoos. And we can tuck those in here and there. And we want to hide the stick as much as we can. Actually, that's not too hidden, is it? Let us put it back here. There. Okay. Now we have some pretty gold pine cones. And we have these pretty gold sticks. I kind of like to put these whirly ones like coming out, out of the bow. You don't have to go all the way around the boat either. Just a little. So now we're going to put in some gold sticks. And then what do we have? This beautiful owl. Where can he go? I think he needs to go up front. So we're putting this beautiful owl up front. So one, three, fives, white, white, white. I guess the only thing I would do yet is maybe add some beautiful irrigated boxwood. Now these go a long ways. Let's put one back here to hide that stick of the ornament. Ah. We need it shorter. That's too short. So we'll just stick one right there. And let's put one out here. So we're kind of framing the bow a little bit, right? Let's put one trailing a little. And I still think we need one back here to hide our stick.
Okay. Put one there. Voila. I call it done. Thank you for watching and happy holidays.